Tom here from Owner Systems. We're going to dive into a recently discovered malware that is attacking specifically Sophos firewalls. But first, if you'd like to learn more about me or my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a short project, there's a hire us button right at the top. If you want to support this channel other ways, there's affiliate links down below to get you deals and discounts on products and services we talk about on this channel, which does include links to our shirt and swag store, as well as a Patreon so you can become a Patreon supporter. And finally, if you'd like to have a more in-depth discussion about the video you're about to watch or suggestions for other videos, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com and we can have a discussion in our free and open community forums. Thank you very much and let's get to the video. All right. The... Sophos news here. Yes, Sophos reporting on Sophos. Uh, and this is a great thing. This is exactly to me security done exactly as it should be in terms of follow up, in terms of mitigation, in terms of debrief. So, what we have here is the Asnarook, I think that's how it's pronounced, Trojan targets firewalls. Well, they should have said targets Sophos firewalls. That would be more accurate, uh, but doesn't mean it can't find other flaws and other firewalls. Now, this write up is really interesting though. Here is the actual knowledge base article from Sophos. Now, if you have your system in Sophos, please patch it. If you have automatic patching turned on, it should be fine. And this uh, was, was updated April 27th, as in today, uh, what happened. Sophos received an incident report on April 22nd, so a few days ago, regarding XG firewalls with subscription field visible in the management interface. Sophos commenced investigation on the incident, determined an attack against physical and virtual XG firewall users. Units. The attack affected systems with either administrative interfaces, HTTPS admin service, or the user portal exposed on the WAN zone. So if you had either of those configurations, uh, that is where the potential from an outside attacker came in. Now, this did not require them to have credentials. This was a SQL injection attack that leveraged the ability for them to potentially exfiltrate data from here. And that's where we dive into the debrief here. Now, this is really good here in terms of debrief. And this is what I like, even though it is by the company as opposed to a third party, Sophos clearly has good engineers on the case and breaks down each piece of how the attack began, how the attack uh, processes through the system. So the infection process started when an attacker discovered an exploit, a zero day SQL injection with remote code execution vulnerability, which means completely remotely can get into this. It does not require any type of credentials. It, like I said, just requires that you have an exposed either user portal or admin portal, which by the way, general practice in my opinion is not to do that. Actually, a lot of people's opinion, not just Tom's. Um, it is not a good idea to expose management interfaces to the greater internet, and this is exactly why. And it doesn't just apply to Sophos. This applies to their firewalls as well. This exploit of this vulnerability resulted in the attacker being able to insert a one-line command into a database table. Now, this is where things get really interesting because they re-simulated the attack on their system so they could kind of understand it. So the, the install SA script ran initially, ran a number of Postgres SQL commands to modify and zero up values of certain tables in a database, one of which normally displays the administrative IP address of the device itself. It appears there was an attempt to conceal the attack, but it backfired. On some appliances, a cell script activity resulted in the attacker own injected SQL command being displayed on the user interface of the firewall. And this is what got people's attention. Suddenly they're seeing SQL in the IP address, uh, SQL commands there. So that's not good. Now I'm gonna leave a link to this. You can read up on the details, but they break down every step and stage because this is actually a strung together of several pieces. So first you start with the SQL injection, and then there is a pivot into each piece that it goes through and try to establish persistence. Um, from there, it actually has a payload. The only thing that they're not clear on is whether or not this was successful at all in actually exfiltrating data. It has the potential to do it. That is clearly the goal. They are not clear whether or not, and I guess it's gonna depend on the firewall and probably some further reading. And by the way, this is probably gonna be updated several times. So follow the link over here on Sophos and they'll keep up to date on there. The short answer is, if you have a Sophos, get it patched. Uh, this is where the note is in the data exfiltration process. Note, this section describes our understanding of the data exfiltration capabilities of the malware at the time of publication of this article. But we have not discovered any evidence that data collected had been successfully exfiltrated. And basically, they dump all the config of the firewall, and if you had remote access like a VPN, they would have your VPN config and be able to get into that network. So this is just a really good remediation response all the way here at the end, um, top to bottom, the way I think security should be done and done right. So 
This is one of the reasons first, as a general rule, never ever, whether you're running any firewall, uh, expose the management interface because that's just a bad idea. If there's ever a flaw found, that is where the flaw is frequently found. This occurred not that long ago in some Cisco equipment where they found the flaw in the interface and Cisco's handling of it was not anywhere close to as good as Sophos. Sophos has actually done this top to bottom with a full quick mitigation. Now there is no CVE assigned to this yet. This was a zero day, so they were quick to act. They did not go into denial mode. They did not, uh, I've covered the Cisco one before, kind of come up with a really poor solution. They may immediately started looking for the indicators of compromise. They started blocking the domains uh, that they were finding this coming from. And I have noticed quite a bit of, and I'm gonna pull up a little screenshot here, of these type of attacks really ramping up. Now this is a screenshot just of this morning from my uh, Sericata logs on my firewall. And there is a pretty heavy number of attacks going that Sericata has identified against, well, these are Draytech routers, uh, the recently discovered uh, DDWRT remote execution. And this is a really old, but they're still out there because by the way, just because a firewall is old doesn't mean someone took it offline. A really old vulnerability in checkpoint firewalls um, and those are still banging away on my firewall there and Sericata's catching and stopping and blocking those. These are, these are attacks in the wild pretty soon once this is uh, signatures developed, which they did develop signatures. They do have a full set of this. It'll get into the logs and I'll probably see a bunch of XG, Sophos XG logs in my Sericata for those type of attacks. So one, hands off to uh, Sophos for doing a top to bottom job here on both, you know, just dealing with people who reported the issue quickly coming out with mitigation, diving deeper into it. And this was published uh, the other day. So they were doing the research over the weekend, even, you know, nonstop. This is what you want from a good security team because when there's a zero day in a product, you want it fixed as fast as possible, which they did. There was no delay. There was no, you know, problems regarding that. A excellent debrief of everything that it does. And of course them speculating and not being the overly confident. Oh no, they didn't exfiltrate data. At the time they appear to couldn't get the mechanism to actually exploit the data and actually pull it out. So they don't think it did it. They think it was a failed attempt, but they left it open to further testing. And I'm positive they're still plugging away at it, truly trying to dive into it. So uh, if you have a Sophos firewall, uh, please change all your passwords if you had one of these and you had the configurations of the management portals exposed. But something else to think about is if in the internal side of the network you had the portals exposed and perhaps a bad actor was able to get this less statistically likely, either way, probably change your passwords anyways, uh, because there's a risk there that this could have occurred. Follow the links on Sophos. They do have all the updates and uh, keep up with it if you have one of those firewalls. But uh, I hope more firewall companies realize this is the way to do security, right? When you have a flaw, you get ahead of it by documenting it all yourself, walking through it all yourself. Don't let some third party researcher just call you out and everyone else go, hey, this is a uh, a bad thing and your guys are in denial about it. Looking at you, Cisco, and I'll leave a link to that Cisco video about Red Balloon Security. It, it, it's kind of face palming. It's the way not to handle it versus the way this got handled. Thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general. Even suggestions for new videos, they're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.